I have a problem. Taking cello lessons was supposed to be a temporary thing. Turns out, I love to play the cello, but I also love the violin. And because taking lessons in two instruments will simply not be doable, I have to make a decision. Or do I? So what I have here is a C string for violin, but also an F string. Wabba! Okay. <laughs> Having a C and an F string on my violin will allow me to play in almost the entire cello range. Except for the lowest three notes of the cello, but that's all right. I mean, we're challenging the laws of physics already more than enough here. But hold on, I thought you had a five string violin. That's true. So where are you gonna put that F string? Easy, we're simply ditching the E string. So here we have a five string violin that pretends to be a six string violin, I guess. From high to low, we have A, D, G, C and F which makes me wonder what you would call such a thing. I know that six string violins are often called fadolins. Fa for F, do for C, as in do, re, mi. And the rest is a violin. We do have an F and a C, but the rest is an incomplete violin. So maybe we should call this a fadoli, as in we're missing a string, we're missing a letter. Or maybe even tenor five string violin. But the big question is, how does it sound? And is it in any way compatible or even slightly comparable to the cello? Let's find out. So the sound is definitely there and that's a good thing. I was a bit afraid that the F string would sound very muffled and dull on this violin, but it's actually quite all right. Of course, I was also quite curious how the C and F string would sound on my good violin. I was wondering if the C and F string would maybe resonate better on a high quality instrument, but well, just hear for yourself. I'm not really sure if the microphone captured that well, but when I put the C and F string on this violin, it sounded rubbish. The sound was really thin and hardly resonating. And when I put those strings on this cheap factory made violin, they sounded a lot better. And the only reason why I can think of is that the wood of this violin is probably a lot thicker. But what do I know, of course? But if you do know things and you might know why this is, feel free to let me know in the comments below. But now, let's compare it to cello. Well, <laughs> seeing this on camera is so funny. It's almost like a family photo. <laughs> So here we have the dad, and then we have the good kid who always get good grades. Then we have the special kid who has an extra limb or something like that. And then we have the punk, the black sheep, if you will. Every family's got one. If it's you, you know. Okay, but all in all, of course, the cello is the big winner here. Those low strings just sound amazing on cello. And that makes sense, obviously, because such low notes need such a big body to help them resonate. And putting a low C and a low F string on the violin will always be a compromise. However, 
Acoustic violins with five or even more strings are usually built a bit differently. The body of the instrument is usually thicker and wider to help the low strings sound good. So far my plan is to return to my violin lessons after the summer holidays and I might start looking for a luthier who can build me a violin with more than four strings. Five should be doable, but ideally I would love to have an acoustic violin with six strings. Am I going to find such an instrument or somebody who is willing to build it for me? I have no idea. We'll just wait and see. But maybe I should not be kidding myself any longer. Maybe I should just face the fact that my ideal instrument is simply the viola.